FIGU Bulletin 28 Translation The near death of some Jays for some weeks now FIGU has its own English discussion forum in the internet. This discussion forum has found great interest in the meantime. In one of the many interesting discussions someone asked a question as to what happened to some Jays on December 15, 1977. I answered him as follows, while some Jace was sitting in a locked room at the center, discussing various matters with Billy, a person who knew that some Jace was in there sneaked to the door in order to hear her voice. When some Jace heard a light knocking at the door she got excited and, while rising to her feet, she stumbled and fell with her head upon an electric stove and toward the wall. In falling she pushed the button of her transmission device and vanished was beamed up into her ship where she was laying on the floor for a longer time. When she didn't return to the station Quetzal went searching for her and found her there in a deep coma. In addition to a broken arm some Jay suffered a severe brain damage. The base of her skull was broken. On the flight back to Eric Quetzal tried to take the pressure away from her brain by applying a vacuum device. On Era, only seconds before she would have died, she was frozen. Later, with the help of a highly developed race from the Dala universe, she recovered. However, she had and still has to relearn her consciousness-related abilities again, a process that lasts some 70 years. Then, another person wrote the following posting, this is the official story, however there have been serious questions about this and evaluations indicate the injuries are more consistent with a beating than with a fall. Particularly of interest is the way in which she could have fallen so as to break an arm and sustain injuries in the back of the head so severe to as drive shards of bone into the brain. An impact with the cement support for a stove seems unlikely. By the way which arm was it, I cannot find the material in any references concerning that. I had asked you this before but unfortunately the topics rise again. Others consulted generally do not want to consider the implications of the theory of it being a case of attempted murder and not an accident. Especially considering later developments one definitely has serious concerns as to who at FIGU would have had the disposition to do it especially the ability to sneak up on an errand without them becoming aware of it. Another thing in question is why there was no alarm given off by the beamship when the vitals of some Jace were diminishing and why such an extended period of time passed before the ship was located. With Terran technology such a scenario would be likely, but with Aran technology being used it raises some questions. After five answers to that person's posting from three persons, and after Billy having been informed about the matter from the USA, I wrote my second reply, what are you aiming at with your confused and crazy posting regarding some Jace's accident? Of course your innuendo has nothing to do with the truth. The truth is that Sam Jace was sitting at the table. When she heard the sound from the door she wanted to leave and stood up, but with one of her feet she was caught by the table leg, which was the reason why she fell upon the portable electric iron stove, which was damaged by her fall. Billy himself also jumped up, heard her faint cry, and saw her head crashing against the wall just before she vanished. Obviously during her fall she had triggered the button of her transmitter device. Source, 95th contact of December 17, 1977 Unfortunately, some Jace didn't have the protection device with her on that contact, since she didn't intend to stay long at the center, and because she felt safe in that special location room. The Pajarans usually wear such a device in order that they may be warned and protected if a terrestrial person comes near them. Ah yes, some Jace broke her right arm. I think you are in danger of losing ground and reality beneath your feet. That's really a thing, AFIGU member trying to kill some Jace. If your innuendo would be true the Pajarans wouldn't have continued meeting with Billy. A question, is Randy Winters behind this scheme? When we informed Billy about your posting he guessed that your crazy theory could be based on his untrue claim that since 1984 the Pajarans don't visit with Billy anymore. For those interested, on February 3, 2000, 
Billy had his 279th official contact with Ta. Before closing I will mention another argument from Billy, if the claim concerning a murder attempt by a FIGU member, that person is still a core group member. Would be true, the Pleiadians Plajarans nowadays certainly wouldn't show themselves again above the center in order, that core group members can see and even photograph their ships. Once again one can only shake one's head about the confusing ideas some people can have. Christian Frenner, Switzerland Hi Christian and Billy, thank you for the additional information. The theory is mine. I did ask Randy Winters several years ago about this and his response was that he could not think of anyone at FIGU who would have the inclination or capability of carrying out such an act. He said if Billy ever did anything it would have been that he made up the story just to cover up the idea that some Jace gave up on him. He had nothing derogatory to say about FIGU in this sense and said that the repercussions of a murder in this case would be enormous and thoughts that he would prefer not to deal with. Randy has nothing to do with this and to my knowledge has never addressed the subject except to me. Best wishes. Anthony W. Sinner you can post this if you want. The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion English Since 1903, Anti-Semitic Neo-Nazi Groups, Organizations, Individual Fanatics and Other Types of Circles Antagonistic to Jews, have officially occupied themselves with the so-called Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, which is attributed to Jewish Zionist circles, respectively, Jewish Zionist Learned Elders. Since then, again and again, it has given, and gives, cause for the persecution and hatred of Jews. Yet what actually conforms to the truth in regard to this? Said with few words, as the Pleiadians Plagerin explain it deals with a monstrous work of lies, with an uncommonly evil falsification, respectively, a plagiarism emerging from earlier novels, which came about after the middle of the 19th century. According to the Pleiadian Plagerin information, the top person in charge of the Russian Secret Service in Paris, John Ratkowski, created the final version of the slanderous work in the years 1897-98, which was then first published in 1903 in Russia in the newspaper The Banner, with the mendacious assertion that it was genuine. However, its actual distribution first occurred in the year 1919 and indeed quite explosively at the hands of the Russian opponents of the 1917 revolution. Thereby, with the publication of the alleged protocols, undoubtedly the intention existed to form anti-Semitism into weapon against Bolshevism. They were then taken over in Nazi Germany brought in and introduced by Fyodor Winberg, a Ukrainian officer and fighter against the Russian revolution, who was living in German exile. The slanderous work is still in circulation today and further causes further racial damage, whereby it is asserted that the Jews had created a secret world government and hoarded all the gold, this, and that the Jewish people are to blame for wars and political as well as commercial crises, and so forth. Such defamatory assertions exist in many kinds of variations, which naturally represent a godsend for anti-Semitic Nazi circles and other extreme right racist circles. The two following versions of nonsense assertions from the alleged protocols may serve as an example. Dash quote, 9. The Function of War. 3-3. Three, three. In order to induce the power-hungry to a misuse of power we will bring all forces in opposition one to another. 7-2. Throughout all Europe, and by means of relations with Europe, in other continents also, we must create for men's, discords and hostility. 7-3. We must be in a position, to respond to every act of opposition by war with the neighbors of that country, which dares to oppose us. But if these neighbors should also venture to stand collectively together against us, then we must offer resistance by a world war. Dash or quote, 12. Death 9. Death is the inevitable end for all. Therefore, it is better to bring that end nearer to those who stand in the way of our goals. These days, all governments and high government persons as well as all banks and their bosses primarily the Rothschilds as well as commercial magnates and so forth become, 
through the anti-Semitic neo-Nazi circles and extreme right circles, worked into in the slanderous machinations in order to stir up hate, especially against the Jewish world and their alleged world government. In the Nazi era the anti-Semitic inflammatory text, with Ray bellowing, was especially distributed by the Nazis, and indeed not only in Germany, rather also everywhere where Nazis were active in other countries. In Switzerland these were the FR and Teller elite. Those on the front who brought the Mendacious Protocols into circulation, as Adolf Hitler finally seized power in Germany in the spring of 1933. That gave the Jewish organizations in Switzerland an opportunity to make a legal move against the slanderous protocols and namely in the Bern Magistrates Court. The process unleashed worldwide attention and it was made clear that the alleged protocols were a forgery, respectively, a work of lies. Unfortunately, several years later, the judgment was trivialized again in the High Court and, as it were, repealed whereby the lies and slander against the Jews resurfaced. They are nothing other than lies, deceit and swindle in a form, which is truly a crime against peoples. They are a monstrously defamatory poor piece of work of irresponsible, criminal anti-Semites, an evil, people's denigrating and genocidal poor piece of work with which Adolf Hitler and his Myrmidons also occupied themselves and which contributed uncommonly much to Hitler's Nazi right being responsible for millions of innocent Jews and also people of different races and different beliefs men, women and children being tormented, tortured and handed over for gruesome deaths. For those interested, the following book is worth reading, Die Protokoll der Weisen von Zion by Jeffrey L. Sammons, Wallstein Verlag. ISBN 3-89244.191-10 Should one always tell the truth no matter what? Important note this is an unofficial but authorized translation of a FIGU publication. NB This translation contains errors due to the insurmountable language differences between German and English. Before reading onward, Please read this necessary prerequisite to understanding this document. Webmaster's note, translation of this article was made by Gay Eye Guys, during November 2009, and sent to Webmaster. English pages 9 to 10 readers question now a question of morality, is it really right, always and really always to tell the truth, even if one knows, in a certain situation that a selfless lie could prevent suffering and thereby would actually only have advantages? The philosopher Immanuel Kant cites, as an example of his categorical imperative, the following case, a man pursued by a murderer seeks protection with a neighbor and hides in his house. Now, were the neighbor asked by the murderer, whether he hid the man he seeks in his house, then he must tell the truth and hand the defenseless man over to the murderer. In order not to break the law, he must, in every case, tell the truth, as it is also expected by his fellow humans. What is to be made of this, and what do the creational laws say about it? NL. Germany answer Immanuel Kant's uncompromising stance that a concealment of something is designated a lie or an evasive lie, which is also advocated by various other philosophers, is, in the framework of this reference, not correct. Therefore when, in the aforementioned example by Kant, the presence of the one sought by the murderer is concealed by the neighbor, then that has nothing to do with a lie or an evasive lie, rather solely and alone with the facts concealment, which results due to reasons of conscience and for the protection of the life of another human being. A lie or an evasive lie is something completely different to a concealment of a fact there can be no argument about that not even if all the philosophers in the world oppose it by screaming blue murder and running amok. A lie or an evasive lie is, in every case, a conscious, untrue deception and statement for the purpose of one's own well-being and profit, and so forth. A lie or evasive lie is, and therefore always remains, a deliberate distortion of the truth for one's own advantage, and indeed also in regard to feelings and emotions. Lies and evasive lies are a twisting of the facts as well as intentional ambiguities, vagueness and hypocrisy for the sake of one's own advantage in any kind of form. Lies and evasive lies are, therefore, 
something false, which originate from a craving for recognition, from angst, cowardice, revenge, hate or false love, and so forth. In any kind of form also in regard to morality lies, and evasive lies are always an end in themselves and egoistic. From this the human thus avoids himself and adopts unworthy behavior. To conceal something does not count as a lie nor as an evasive lie, whereby the evasive lie is just as strictly delineated as is the actual lie. A concealment is based on a fact which could be communicated, about which, nevertheless, one remains silent, which, for example, can certainly be done for reasons of conscience or for the protection of one's self or another person. Through the concealment, which in no way can be equated with a lie or an evasive lie the actual facts of a matter can therefore be concealed. How that appears in a particular case always is dictated by the situation, which certainly may be clear. Yet it is certain that a concealment, respectively, remaining silent, has nothing to do with a lie or an evasive lie, which in each case, always, in some form or other, relate to things which are ends in themselves. Concealment of, or remaining silent about, facts are, nevertheless, always and without exception a question of conscience, which can only be resolved through clear reason and in compliance with the related laws. This is the viewpoint of the spiritual teaching, which, as is apparent, is not compatible with the stated views of terrestrial philosophers, who, in their thinking as well as their expositions and explanations, are able to speak and philosophize in a way pertaining to purely material intellectual rationality. Billy, 